Tampa, Florida, a city of crisscrossing waterways and highways. Today, a buzzing metropolis. But in 1986, this Gulf Coast city is a sleepy destination for retirees. It's in this slower, more quaint Tampa that Natalie Blanche Holly is growing up. And you can see Blanche here and me here. Anita Holly, Blanche's older half-sister. Give me a sense of Blanche's personality. Um, outgoing? She was quite gregarious. She was happy. Somebody you'd want to talk to. She was so beautiful. Wow. Was the key heartbreaking word. On January 25, 1986, Blanche leaves work from a local fast food restaurant and never makes it home. My ex-husband calls me and says, I have some news. Um, your sister's dead. She'd been murdered. Natalie Blanche Holly had been stabbed about 12 times in her upper torso, and her body had been dumped about 12 to 15 miles from where her car was found. A stunning crime, but residents of Tampa barely noticed. That same day, a bigger story pushes Blanche Holly right off the front page. It is the worst disaster in the history of the American space program. The space shuttle Challenger is destroyed. All seven astronauts on board are killed. Eleven months pass and the Holly case runs cold. Then, on December 5th, a second dead woman found north of Tampa, 26-year-old Terry Lynn Matthews, a bank clerk who never made it home either. Right over here is where Terry's body was dumped, right here on the embankment. Detective Gary Kling of the Pasco County Sheriff's Office. She was wrapped in a hospital sheet. We noticed that she had several stab wounds in the chest area. She also had blunt trauma, basically wounds to her head, which was caused by a heavy object. Terry Lynn was last seen here on a post office security camera, picking up her mail after work. Her car door was open, lights were on, and she had mail that she had retrieved from her post office box scattered on the ground. It's a mystery, but police have barely put up the crime scene tape when there's a third grim discovery. There was another young lady discovered in Hillsborough County on the same day, Stephanie Collins. The 17-year-old high schooler was reported missing when she never made it to church choir practice. A month later, Stephanie's body is found, a half hour's drive from where Terry Lynn Matthews was discovered. When Terry Matthews' body was found and subsequently Stephanie Collins on the same day, it was extremely shocking for our communities. It left a lot of people alarmed, a lot of people called in frightened. Blanche Holly, Terry Matthews, and Stephanie Collins, three young women abducted, beaten, and dumped, all within a 20-mile radius. Could the murders be linked? Police have no way of knowing, and the investigation stalls. Even a reward for information goes unclaimed. What is it like for the family all of these months and months and nothing? You try to tuck the pain away and deal with it a little bit at a time because it's, it's paralyzing. Then, after four painful years, a break. A Crime Stoppers tipster puts detectives in touch with Cheryl Jo Kobe, who has an incredible story about her ex-husband. His name, Oscar Ray Bolin. Cheryl Kobe admitted being at home one evening when Mr. Bolin walked in and threw a purse down in front of her. And the fact that then she saw a driver's license of a female that was in the purse. He told her that he had just killed the girl. That was the Natalie Blanche Holly homicide. Then an even bigger shocker. Cheryl Colby also reveals she was with Oscar the night Stephanie Collins went missing. This time saying it wasn't just a purse she saw, but a person. Cheryl Colby went with Mr. Boland to an area in Northern Hillsborough County off Morris Bridge Road and actually observed him dump the body of Stephanie Ann Collins out of the truck on the roadside. But what about the third murdered woman, Terry Lynn Matthews? Police reach out to other Bolin family members, including Oscar's half-brother, Philip. When we met with Philip Bolin, he told us of the night of Terry's murder. When he walked out to where Oscar was, he saw 
a body wrapped in a sheet. And at that point, Oscar Boland struck her several times in the head. The noose now tightening around one person, but it's fibers found at all three crime scenes that ultimately tie Oscar Boland to all three victims. We actually took evidence uh, the, that were recovered at the crime scene uh, in different samples, and we sent those to the FBI laboratory in Washington, D.C. And that's where the FBI laboratory was able to link forensically those cases. We've got a hair match from his head to the Stephanie Collins case that matches his head hair. The FBI laboratory also found wool fiber that connected the Terry Lynn Matthews case, the Stephanie Collins case, and the Natalie Blanche Holland homicide case also, all three cases. Finally, police believe they've found their killer, a serial killer. There is no way Oscar A. Boland is innocent. We've got overwhelming evidence. We've got him linked forensically with these homicide cases. Oscar Boland works as a trucker, but when police go to arrest him, he wasn't traveling the open road. They find him here in Ohio's Lebanon prison, serving 25 to 75 years for kidnapping and rape. Bolin is arrested and brought to Tampa. By the time he stands trial years later, he says he can't remember where he was the nights of the three murders. This defendant, Oscar Ray Bolin, caused the death of Terry Lynn Matthews. There is no tie, there is no connection to Oscar Ray Bolin to this offense. The defense goes on the attack, saying the evidence is circumstantial, witnesses lied, and that the state is setting Oscar up. The prosecution will never admit what they did. I am innocent of the murder of Terry Lynn Matthews. I have maintained my innocence all the time. I don't feel you were fair and partial law. Each murder is tried separately, yet through all the testimony, the grieving mothers of all three victims are banded together sitting side by side every day. There was an amazing strength, though, in seeing the three of them together. I can't imagine how it would have been if they'd been alone. They were sisters in pain. They were right there for each other. Sisters all in pain. The time. Sisters in pain. Um, and they learned to love each other and respect each other. They supported each other. After countless days of testimony, multiple trials and hearings, Oscar's fate is sealed. Advise and recommend to the court that it impose the death penalty upon Oscar Ray Bolin Jr. Three death sentences for Oscar Ray Bolin. Rosalie distraught, the victim's families elated. I believe there was one death penalty that came back in like less than 10 minutes, less time than you would think it would take to make the vote and press the button for the bailiff. What went through your mind when you heard him say death? It was relief, you know. I, I felt that he got what he deserved, and it's, it's a great sense of relief. But that relief is short-lived. Could the forensic evidence that helped put Oscar Bolin away actually be his ticket to freedom all these years later? Was the FBI wrong? This is what I've been waiting for. And while the verdict ends one nightmare for the families, another is just beginning. And the breaking news comes from us. Now you're telling me that his death is not imminent? No, not at this moment. Uh, what is wrong? Stay with us.